Play again. What was I didn't know you catch that stuff. Play again. Come on, All today. Star FM, the fastest growing digital station in the north. Hi, I'm Matty Bowen, and you're listening to Rugby AM. How good's Matty Bowen, Jamie? It's coming on, it is. Uh, he's got better and better every week, I reckon. Nice fellow when I sat down with him, and that's when he, uh, he gave us that stab. But yeah, lovely, typical sort of uh, Aboriginal fella, a bit quiet. Were you, were you drinking out of a brown bag? Yeah, yeah. Drink, <laughs> uh, eating, uh, he ordered a bag of sand to eat for his dinner as well at Costa. <laughs> like the older were fighting, that's my sand, girl. <laughs> No, no, he's a top fella. He's uh, the hardest nails out there, and uh, he, he's playing really well. He, he's scored some great tries. He played well overnight for for Wigan, but just defending pretty well. The these lads. <laughs> Can just imagine him fighting over sand? Yeah, it was like Marcus buying it. The, the, the Barmy. They're not all them like uh, PNG guys. The uh, I remember him telling his that his, house, his mum moved the house once, and uh, she literally picked it up and moved it to beach. <laughs> you know, just stupid stuff like that that you, you never that we take for granted over here. When, when I joined him, were all he said that um, two new signings over there that he went around to their house and they had chickens, live chickens in their house. <laughs> they were killing live chickens <laughs> in their house. I was like, on. That Lu- Lu- Luwaki, is it Luwaki? And another one. Which we're, doctor? We were, uh, we're running around with live chickens and Adam and killing them in their house. Like live chickens in the house. <laughs> wow. <Bam. laughs> right, we're going, to split, uh, we're going to crack on with game reviews and I'll get through. We've got some loads of questions. Well, if you've got any questions tonight for our guests, please tweet us at Rugby AM. Uh, any of the lads want to dish any of the dirt as well. Also, James Lefwit. Super ginger, isn't he? Proper ginger. I didn't realise how ginger he was until yesterday. Oh, yeah, he glows. Yeah. He um, glows. Like Johnny Best, though. We had him at the game of the week. I, thought, I actually thought it was Johnny Best, though. Ginger Society. Yeah, you talk, you'll know Tony don't like too many, don't like too many ginger in his team, does he? <laughs> he's got, he's, he's got <laughs> yeah. ginger phobia. I think he must have, yeah. So um, I think as one comes in, he has to let one go. So yeah, he's yeah, is that why really Riley? Riley, that's why Riley's at work here on loan. Yeah, one in, one out. <laughs> cool. big, big, big chat on wall. Oh, we've got two ginners. Get one out now. <laughs> Ready. I was publicly berated on Saturday night by Ray French at a play tributed to Eddie Waring for suggesting that we should invest our time and energy and efforts into what we have in the Northern game, given that the South just don't seem to want it, regardless of the 150 years we've been trying to spread it. But Morgan Esquire's performance in their 37-24 win against Salford is certainly one example that doesn't help my case. The 22-year-old Frenchman has been outstanding for Catalan this year, and Saturday night was no different. Esquire is a fine example of what spreading our game can do, albeit far outside our British borders. The French outfit bounced back from their Challenge Cup exit at Bradford uh, by undoing the Salford Red Devils at the Gilbert Bruton Stadium with a niggly game plan, according to Salford boss Yestin Harris. Salford had a slow start and found themselves 16-0 down following tries from Esquire and Millard, which is symptomatic of the tough mission that travelling to Catalan is. Salford soon found the feet though and the rhythm with tries from Fancy Smelly, Greg Eden and Danny Williams and went into the half-time break 18-6 in front. Fight on. Salford ran out of steam though with just Gareth Hock managing to score in the second half whilst the Catalonian Festival celebrated further tries from Zeb, Ty, Leon Price and Escaray third. Triple combo! Bath also kicked a penalty goal whilst the Policier rubbed the salt in the devil's wounds with a drop goal. After seeing Salford on Easter Monday, I can't understand where they're not picking up more wins, but certainly Catalan are the team in Super League that like to keep us on our toes. Is it rolling? Yeah. Do you keep this rolling, Moss? Yeah, yeah, we keep, we're on now. We're on air. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> so is that a situation in the studio? Two dogs being the first to offend the Simmons um, law and order. I'm sat next to the door for the reason, because we're not having people going for the toilet when we're on air. End of, Jonesy, whether it's you... Whether it's Tony Smith, whether it's Marwan Kukash, you can all sit and wait to play a record. All no, right? That's fair enough. I'll bring a catheter next week. It's all right. <laughs> uh, do you want to carry on your game review, Jonesy? Ready. If you were fortunate enough to be one of the 7,000 fans at the John Smith Stadium this week, you'd have been fortunate to have witnessed probably the contest of the round. Last year's league toppers were back on top form against the Red Hot Castleford side, who to press have only recorded two defeats in the 2014 Super League season. The game started off like Noah's Ark, with both teams going in for tries two by two. First it was a pair, Michael Shenton and Justin Carney, both crossing to put the cast side 12-0 up. But the other field centres, Kudrow and Wardle, replied with two tries of their own, leaving nothing between the two sides, who both went in at half-time, 12 points apiece. Fight on! 
Then they came out in the second half and went tit for tat with precise symmetry as McGilvery put the Giants ahead before Caswinger Dixon replied in kind. Scott Griggs and Aaron Murphy both crossed to put some breathing space between the home team and the visitors, but Jake Webster and Daryl Clark showed why Castleford are worthy contenders for all three trophies this season. In the end, it came down to who had the best skill and composure to drop a goal to win the game, and following Lee Breezy's retirement last year, Danny Brough must have taken the crown as goal-kicking guru. Is Kay Stremford with his 75th minute drop goal to separate the two and records Huddersfield's third win in a row. Awesome victory! Super. You um, you guys played Cast not too long ago. We, Leeds have got them on Thursday night and uh, realised it's going to be quite a massive game. Though. It's always really tough anyway at Cast, but they're on fire this year. How did you guys find them? Yeah, um, we come against. I just, I just, know, I just found that they just, every player like knew his role in the team. I think Dow's got them all looking. You know, you worry about your own job and it kind of all clicks together. And it seems like, you know, the forwards are running at, they're running hard, fast with, with push. You know, it's hard to defend when you've got men at, Men outside, men out the back, and everything. They've got so many options. It's um. Cheers for that time. Sorry about you that. Button in. Jonesy butted in again. What the chuckle brothers was it yeah, in okay. today? But yeah, um, good side, enthusiastic, out muscled us really, which was you know disappointing. Um, so it's, and it's always a tough game for Leeds at Cass. It's, there's not much in it, so should be a cracker. Well, I know the Cass supporters are quite often uh, they're not bothered if you don't win a game all season as long as they beat us. And they've got the wish on a fair few occasions. It's always, as you say, real tough. But them guys seem to know what they're on about uh, at Cass. We're all playing to their individual strengths. Keith and uh, Big Uby, I think he's been on fire. Who's been your standout player for, for Cass this year? What do you reckon? I think Mickey, you know, as Mickey said, you know, they're all playing pretty well as a team. And, um, you know, that. I don't, I'm not too sure about individual uh, players, really. Defin I think that, Definitely I think, Jordan Tanzi, definitely. <laughs> I think Davil Clark's one of the, the danger men. I think uh, once, you know, the cast forwards get him on the front foot, I think Davil Clark, uh, he's, he's, he doesn't look that big, but he's just really strong. And, uh, you know, if, if you give Fast. him a sniff, he, you know, he, he breaks through the line and, you know, makes a lot of breaks, sets some tries up. So, yeah, I think I think he's probably, Spark, for me, yeah. the, 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 the danger man, really. Did did, uh, did you pick some tips up from it there, Mickey? Obviously, it's your position, so it must have been a yeah, little yeah, bit um, heartbreaking with yeah, the young kid, young kid comes coming through, through the system. Like, you still hate it, don't you? No matter all, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't let these young kids come through. And it's like when they do, it's you know sometimes you got to hold your hand up and yeah, I like him, good kid. He's you know he's still young, he's learning, but. Mickey knows what number he is because he was sick of seeing it on his back, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, <it> was. <laughs> well, if, if the rumours are to be true, Mickey, you'll be, you'll be coaching yourself, being, it'll be on your team next yeah, year. Yeah, but yeah, I've, I've, it's been Apparently a shock. Apparently it's a done deal. That's I believe so, yeah. Somebody said that a couple of years back, but it's, you know, it's never happened. You, all the rumours he's signed, but he's gone back to Cass for a year and all this. But um, certainly if he come to our club, he'd be, he'd be a welcome addition, you know. Do you rate him? I'm, I'm getting on a bit now. Yeah, I do rate him, yeah. Yeah, I do. And I think, you know, again, he's... He, he's He's progressing every year, he's maturing as a player now and certainly, you know, if he comes to Warrington it'd be a real coup, but um I'm sure Cass will be fighting tooth and nail to keep hold of him. So it'd be a shame to see Cass lose some of the some of the performers this year. And it's I think when a club does so well and has a such a good start to the season, it's a, it's a kind of bit of a shame that you know that Wigan's gonna try and take maybe one or two, Warrington might take one two, Leeds might take one. It's it'd be good to see him like try to grow their club and challenge up top up to up to league. It should be buffered. I think with the salary cap and where you where is where is he from? Clark, where's he where's he where's he Castlad, isn't he? He's Cast lad, yeah. so that's what I thought. But um, you know, if you're a Cast lad and you're getting paid well enough, why would Money you want to go somewhere like Wigan? Money talks. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They're all they're all salary cap, so it should be fairly relative anyway. I mean, he's one of them players. Well, I mean, look what Rangie Chase was getting paid at Cast. But look what where's all that money getting dividends? Look, look at Kevin Kev Locks that's offered. You can't tell me they're under the salary cap. No, well I've heard. I know my one uh, is inventive with the numbers apparently, but uh, well I don't know. So people keep saying allegedly, allegedly. Um, but um, yeah, you can have a job in the shop. In terms of in terms of Castleford, uh, <laughs> Castleford, the uh, Rangie Chase must have left a fair old uh, hole. Behind when he, uh, when he when he left, so why can't somebody like Clark or one or two others benefit from that? Yeah, fair one, fair one, mate, fair one. Any more game reviews for any more game reviews? Ready. Either Hull or Wakefield benefited from their time off after the Easter period, as both sides were out of the Challenge Cup action last week. All I see looked to be the fresher side, though, scoring two first half tries through Danny Outman and Jordan Rankin are going to the break 12 0 up. 
Ben Crooks scored again after the break to put the home team 16 points in front and on course for a comprehensive win. But Richard Mathers set the ball rolling with a try as Wakefield then went 23 unanswered points for a Wakefield win. Smith, Ryan and Samet all scored to finish off what Lee Radford described as an unenthusiastic Hull performance and much needed for Wakefield now that Bradford seem to be getting stronger with each week. Like that, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <Stop, Ed. laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to end the game, isn't it? He's doing that skims and toes, Jose. That's the one. I, uh, I was running out of time. <laughs> so, game review's got shorter and shorter. But it was quite interesting, uh, Wakefield, the, uh, the 23 unanswered points in that, in that second half. I think they went in 12-0 uh, down, 16-0, coming into the second half, and then Mathers, our friend Mathers, who likes to dance, who was uh, a bit fruity apparently, according to you guys, allegedly, <laughs> he, uh, he kicked it back off for Wakefield. Um, Bradford, now, they've got that win, they're enthusiastic, could have done with probably Wakefield losing that, but do you reckon yeah. Bradford can catch Wakefield? You know? what what's the difference there? Is it six, 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 six points? Six zero um, I think, yeah, I do. I think they'll, uh, you know, they'll, I think certainly they can catch them. You know, they'll be getting some troops back on board soon. And, you know, the two wins they've had last two weeks, great winning the cup against Catalans and a, you know, a, a real good boost against beating us as well. So they'll be full of confidence now. And I'm sure they'll be, uh, they'll be looking to catch them in front. Because then, you know, that, it's a little thing when you walk past a change and we're all sat there and you can hear them like, zero points, boys. You know, like, we're, yeah. off, we're off the minus. You know, like, that's massive from where they've been. You know, it, it, it is massive. You know, they'd probably be on, what would they be on now? So they've won six, won't they? Yeah, so they'll be like up there in the mix. So I'm sure they'll be confident they can they can pull it around. They might they might get the points back as well at the tribunal. I think it's Tuesday next Tuesday to try and get some of those points back. Get I'll Keith, be, I'll, no, I'll be very negative. <laughs> well, end of the day, they've set the precedent by already dis, you know giving taking points away from other teams. So yeah. it's already been set, and and they can't give them back now after they've already done it because it would just make them it would make the RFL look absolutely stupid. So, uh, in my opinion, I don't think uh, they will get them back. So, it's, it's going to be a tough challenge for them, but it's the type of challenge that you've got to put your hand up for, aren't you, and make sure that you're, you're up for. Hands up. <laughs> that's, that's actually not my fault. It's because my, um, my phone won't go on silent, and you'll vouch for that, won't you, Josh? But we've got some, uh, we've got some uh, f- questions from the boys. If you want to ask any questions to the boys tonight, tweet us at RugbyM, and we'll get all your no-holes-barred questions. Once you're in here, you can't leave until you've been honest with the truth. Is, it, is that all right with you, boys? Let's yeah, get past the 8 o'clock. Okay. Is it the 8 o'clock watershed in first? <laughs> give, it, give it five minutes. Right, how many more game rules we got, Ty? We've got three left. Let's get through them. Let's just get through them. Let's fire through them. Ready. Ready. <laughs> okay, R29, witness 34. Witness Vikings are not far behind Castleford in terms of transformation this season. And they demonstrated how serious they are with a well-earned victory in the depths of East Hull, which is never an easy place to go. Witness scored on 11 minutes from McGrath Lulawai's break through the middle, put Vikings in a great attacking position, and Kevin Brown took the opportunity of both fans shipping a long pass out to Jack Owens, who scored in the corner. Michael Wayman gave the Robin something to go bob, bob, bobbing about when he slid over for OKRs first after picking up a Costigan offload. Brown, who has to be one of the Super League's top performers in the standoff position this year, worked his magic again, feeding Dave Allen a pass that sent him over for Witness's second before Brown himself crossed the line and Tickle, tickle ruthlessly converted both to put the visitors 18 6 up inside of 22 minutes. Wellham scored next from a Craig Hall ball. Love Grove earned his brass, scoring from a Keating pass. The home side gave a frown as they went in 18 6 down. Fight on. After the half time, Brown became a momentary villain as his intercepted pass allowed Ben Kikane to score in the corner and put OK ahead, but Brown replied in the best possible way by scoring a second not long after. Eddie Garden looked to have his sealed the game with a try extended by a Burns drop goal to put the home team seven points in front with as many minutes remaining, but Phelps fed captain John Clark before Brown sealed the golden day with his hat-trick of tries. Combo! <laughs> What was that one? Killer Combo? Killer Combo, that's uh, Kev Brown calling three tries and setting up a load of them. And uh, he's been fantastic. We've just been talking about him. I think he played... Uh, the Avatar. With uh, Mickey Iron back, back in the day. Wigan is, is a good lad. He's just developed over the course of his career, hasn't he? Yeah, another one who's matured into a you know a real senior player. You know, he's been a great sign for Witness, I think. You know, he's had that little bit of... He's got a bit of calmness, a bit of patience to his game. You know, certainly what Witness have been looking for. He's a real... Um, gets around the park. Good pass selection, great kicking game. And, you know, he's got a 
the great dummy as well, which, you know, if time after time you talk about don't fool the dummy and the amount of tries he scored from showing that dummy and going through is um no, he's been a great a great signing for Woodness. Craig Sandercock described him as a world class player. I think he's certainly uh He's right up there in terms of performance. How many have got left now? Ch- tire. Two more. We'll, we'll crack on. Ready. If there was a month-to-month league table for teams in form, I think Leeds and Wigan could arguably be in the top two with uh, Cass very much being around there as well. It was a packed stadium at Edinburgh and a warm spring night where 18,000 crowds stood for a minute's silence to pay respects to Anne Maguire from Wigan who taught at Corpus Christi Secondary School and was tragically killed on Monday. The game started with an early Wigan error which led to Danny Maguire producing a poacher's solo effort to score in the Leeds first set of the game. Zach Ardacre, who for me is the best fullback in the country by a country mile at the minute, slithered through the Wigan's defence to finish off a well-worked scrum move to score in the corner, showing some blistering pace uh, in the process. Methodical and persistent Wigan never went away though and continued to build pressure and looked threatening with Blake Green at the forefront with some fantastic standoff half play but it was Tony Club who scored the first try for Wigan with a dummy half barge powerfully diving over it from one yard out. Wigan were back in it, but a Bisco try came after a scrappy period for Leeds and saw the Leeds team go in at half time with a 16 6 lead. Fight on! Last week's man of the match, Ryan Hall, who's playing like an escaped wild animal at the minute, got on the end of a lovely touch through from Joel Moon's boot to score a try that was further converted by Kevin Sinfield. Scott Taylor did get over for the second Wigan try. That was almost a carbon copy of Wigan's first try and was reminiscent of the under 10s try scoring tally with uh, a second barge over from dummy half. But they're all, they're all worth four points. But Liam Sutcliffe later finished off a comprehensive win for Leeds with one of his trademark tries, taking on the line and using his feet, skill, and footwork to score another try for the future international, in my opinion. A tough win for Leeds after a tough run which doesn't get any easier with Castleford on Thursday and a repeat contest against Wigan at the Magic Weekend. Yeah, one of the funniest things is every week, you know, when I just register little funny things that happen in my life. One of the funniest things I've heard this week is um, a kid who plays, I coach Stanley under eights, he called Dylan. Um, he said to Jones the other day, run past Jones, he went, hey, you still play for Leeds? <laughs> <laughs> He's a cheeky lad, isn't he, that dude? He's a really cheeky lad. <laughs> One of the reasons why... He didn't even look back and say, hey, you and Bill Beverly, let's get running. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why I kept my lad in here below. That'd hurt you with that, though, wouldn't it, Jones? You, know, you <laughs> take things like that to heart, don't you? Good job he's 20-odd years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> Followed him down that alley. <laughs> Ready. St. Helens 48, London 18. Saints were looking for the first win in four games when they kicked off this week's Super League action against winless London Broncos on Thursday night at Langtree Park. It took just five minutes for Matty Dawson to score from a nicely witted kick from John Wilkin that the two London Broncos three quarters calamitously failed to clean up in front of an empty stand of away supporters. Just four minutes later, Luke Wall scored a lovely solo try, taking on the line at first receiver, stepping first off his right foot inside the air defender, then off his left foot to go around the fullback before touching down on the right side of the sticks. London worked hard on their goal line and looked to be containing Saints, but were undone by a Johnny Lomax try on 24 minutes before he broke again just two minutes later to send teammate Makinson in at the corner for his 13th try of the season. London weren't going to go away, they weren't throwing in the towel, uh, and Makinson found himself at the other side of the field defending a well-worked London move which saw his opposite number, Dennis Solomona flying at the corner to record London's first try. Fight on. It was a respectable 20 points to 6 scoreline at half time, but just three minutes into the second half, another Luke Wall solo effort saw him take on London's line, stepping three or four London's players before he offloaded to supporting Lance O'Hire, who was moving so quick I thought he was going to run up the stairs and through the back of the Lancashire Park stand. Swift added another almost from the restart, but just before 50 minutes, Leeds lad Thomas Mims from David Young Academy took advantage of an orthodox bomb from the Bron- Broncos, which came down undefended by the Saints into the hands of Mims, who raced in 30 metres to score a well-deserved try. Walsh and Lomax linked up well to send Greenwood and Jones over in quick succession before London's Veer broke through the middle of the Saints' defence and evaded a Saints' chase back with an offload to Bichet, who finished... London scoring for the night. Then finally, Flanagan did the same for Saints when he dummied to the open side and then dived down the short side between some unsuspecting London defenders for a tricky try to finish off the night. 
it wasn't the spectacle most would hope for on a Thursday night, but certainly some steps forward for London against a very good Saints team at home. Right, um, just talking off the camera then about um, why, 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 the, why would you put London versus Saints on TV? Is that not a bad advert for the sport? Well, you can't predict what it was. Well, I suppose you could probably predict what it was going to be like. <laughs> but, um, but you've got to give London some some showing you. You've got to, if, if they're a Super League team, you've got to let them have a, have a game. And they're on all time. Yeah, I think they want to show the first win of the season for them. I think that's, it's going to be a big <laughs> well, event. So when they, do, if they do finally get the first win of the season. They so only raised left to, left today, to Keefe. Yeah, well, he's, he's realised that he's, it's too big a job for him. I think that's what it is. He's, the depression's got to him. He's, apparently he's going to Fev, the word in the street is. Do that's from you today, isn't it? That? What do you reckon? Allegedly. That? Allegedly. Well, that's what the word I've heard today. You know what I mean? On the, on the rugby aim hotline is that Tony Rater Fev. Don't be surprised, put a bet on, put a quid on. Is, uh, is, any, is London too big for anybody? Uh, you know what I mean? I'm becoming a bit disillusioned personally. I reckon it could be our job. Let's get down there. I'll be the MC, stroke dancer. So he's, got, he's gone straight away. Then. You can be the coach, John. You can be the coach. Jones can be the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway there. Let's recruit a team. So I can build things. Tudor can cook. He can be a chef. Fish and chips all around. <laughs> Laughing. Tudor's got the best fish and chip restaurant in the world. It's amazing. I was, are you open today, Chew Dog? Bank holiday Monday, yeah. Losing out. Right, I'm going to play a tune now. And um, <laughs> Mickey, what, what's this tune for you? you play, everyone's been giving you grief off, off, uh, off air. Yeah, yeah. It's, to, um, for this yeah tune. It's, it's not the best tune, but it's just something. When well, you just said something relating to rugby, it was just reminded me of a Challenge Cup win. You had a few? But, yeah, it was, um, I think it was the second one where we beat. Sorry, fellas, we, we beat you at. At Wembley, um, just remember the night, the night out. I think we we're in Tiger Tiger, and it just come on, and everybody were like, just rocking away, like you know, it's ties around the heads and a few other things. But I'll not, I'll not, um, I'm not say that on a, you know what I mean, a few beers and whatever. But um, that was a great night. You know, it capped a capped a great day off, and you know, any tune, any tune could have been played, but it's just the one that stuck in in my head, like. <laughs> 